grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm Todd Townsend, Bishop of the Diocese of Huron, and uh, I'm speaking to you from my office here at Church House on the grounds of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. I just thought it was time to uh, check in with all of you again and to speak a little bit about and make some comments about our physical and mental health, about our financial health and about, of course, our spiritual health through this time. The physical and mental health uh, is something that's under strain, I would think, for just about everybody uh, in different ways. In a time of, of quarantine or semi-quarantine that we're going through, um, I'm proud of people for doing the right thing. I'm proud of our churches for not gathering. One of the hardest things for us to do is to not gather, but also the ways in which we found um, uh, means to reach out and to help people and to make sure they're there. In some ways, I think it's intensified and increased. Um, I pray regularly for those who are physically uh, and mentally ill at this time because it's a, it's a very difficult time to be ill. Uh, extra fears come in, that's for sure. So we're keeping all of you in our prayers if you're not well. And of course, the people who are doing the work, the physical work, uh, frontline workers in healthcare in particular, but there's so many other people who, who have to get to work and have to help and do so at some risk, and we're, we're very, very grateful uh, for that. The financial health of individuals and families and uh, churches, other communities as well, will be under quite a bit of strain right now as well, and will be over the time to come. So that's also a concern and a prayer of mine. Uh, there are many people whose livelihood is threatened, and I was really glad to see governments and others giving means to help uh, with that. I think in the long run there's going to be some policies and some opportunities to help the most vulnerable people in our society, the most marginalized people, to not be the first to get a hit in times like this. But there's also families living with uh, their salary gone or half of their salary gone. There's communities who won't have the regular flow of income. So in speaking to the Anglican churches in Huron, I wanted to say that um, if you have a steady income, if you have some savings, if you have means of one kind or another, and that's the kind of gift you can offer, this is a very, very good time to invest in your church. Uh, please look to the websites or contact your own congregation and find ways to give electronically. Pre-authorized giving is a very easy thing to set up and a very good thing for your church. Uh, the Diocese of Huron website, diohuron.org, D-I-O-H-U-R-O-N dot O-R-G, has a whole page. And right in the middle of that page uh, is a link to Canada Helps, another way to give quite easily, um, and other information about this. It is a time to invest, so I personally have doubled my tithe, and I know that other leaders in the church house and other senior leaders in our uh, diocese who are able to do so have done similar things and I encourage you if you're able to do the same. Not everybody is going to be able to do that and the reason we want to do it is so that we can serve those who cannot and are at most risk. Then to the spiritual health, the most important kind of health in our view. Um, I would, I would want to say that we um, are very well prepared for a time like this spiritually. That's part of what the church does in regular season, in and out, is through our worship and through our study of scripture, our prayer life, the traditions that we've inherited, we prepare ourselves for times of trouble and we know where to lift our eyes and find help. So that's what we're doing. Our spiritual health is probably really quite good and I want to encourage that, but I also want to encourage you to take opportunities to uh, bring your own spiritual health to a new place, a better place, in this time. Uh, we have, the Christians of course, have a beautiful story to live. We have a beautiful uh, kind of good news to share. Uh, so let me just take a moment to share some of that good news um, as I think of it this weekend in the middle of the season of Lent. This is uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunday will be the fourth Sunday of Lent, and this is the Colic Prayer from from that liturgy. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, through the waters of baptism, your Son made us children of light. May we ever walk in his light and show forth your glory in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I think it's providential. I think it's a gift of God, a provision of God, that the, the common lectionary that we use in our church uh, provides uh, the 23rd Psalm for, for tomorrow's uh, liturgy. The 23rd Psalm is one of the ones we know the best. And it's one that has, I think, one of the most beautiful uh, literary structures, but also theological structures in, in all the scriptures. I'd just like to draw your attention to that about it. If you, if you, I'm using the version that's on page 731 in the book of Alternative Services. I hope you've got one. I hope someone will deliver this or a book of common prayer and a Bible to you if you don't. Download it from anglican.ca under resources. This is, in, uh, this is the version of this from, from our book of Alternative Services. Just the first four verses here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And here we notice the turning point in the psalm. Here we notice, I think, one of the most profoundly theological things in, in all of the scriptures. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of the shadow of death is something we walk through all of the time, and we certainly are walking through right now. Up until this point in this poem, in this psalm, um, everything is speaking about God. We're saying excellent things about God. The Lord is my shepherd, uh, therefore I shall not want. Uh, the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. The Lord is like this. The Lord does that. The Lord revives my soul and guides me along right pathways. These are things we sing about God. But when we get to the words, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and say, I shall fear no evil, the world, and we would have to say, why? How can you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and not fear evil? Because you are with me. We say to the Lord, the Master, the Shepherd, I fear not because you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You've anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At that point, when you shift from talking about God to, to talking to God, to addressing God directly, you're in prayer. You're in a relationship. You're in a trusting situation that saves. Um, in Hebrew, in the language Hebrew that, it, that the psalm would have been written in, there are exactly 26 words before and 26 words after, you are with me. It is the center exactly of the poem. It is the center exactly of our lives. And it's the center exactly of our life right now. And that's a wonderful thing to know. So, address God directly. You and your relationship with God, no matter how good or bad your relationship with God is, is at the center of your life right now, and it is what will save you. Uh, it is what is saving us right now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are with us, even now. I ask your blessing on anyone who is watching this video. You know who that is. You know of your love for that person and what that person needs. Pour out your grace. Give the presence of your Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray for the church. We pray for the world. We pray for those in authority. 
we pray for those who have any kind of need, those who are suffering. We pray for those who are responding to that need. And we give thanks for those who have gone before us, those who have passed on this faith, who have taught us how to trust, and have taught us how to serve. We ask these prayers in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.